Okay, hello everyone. So uh, for, for this presentation, so we will be talking about the side channel and fall attacks on, on machine learning. In the previous talks, we have been uh, focusing on how to apply machine learning methods in the area of physical attacks. Namely, we have heard about hardware tro on hardware trojan, on side channel attacks and fall injection attacks. For, for this talk, we, both of us will be focusing more on uh, the on the, the other perspective, namely like we are using the physical attacks to target the machine learning implementation itself. Okay, sorry. Oops. So this will be the outline of the presentation for today. So first of all, we will be giving an introduction to machine learning and then of course we'll be focusing more on deep learning, which is slightly more popular, oh, actually it's more popular. Then we will be talking about the security vulnerabilities, in this case, the, uh, the hardware physical vulnerability of the DL implementation. The first part is the side channel attacks on deep learning implementation. This will be given by me, and then my colleague, Dr. Xiaolu Ho, she will be giving a presentation about fault injection attack on deep learning. So just to recall, uh, we have already heard about machine learning, so to summarize what machine learning is basically the idea is like if you want to train a machine or have an algorithm which can be fed a, a specific problem and then it can solve the problem independently or by itself and then of course this is a very interesting for, for people or for, for industry as well because this basically mitigates a lot of issue like yeah you in in the way that if you can just pass a problem and then the machine can come up with a solution by itself without being explicitly programmed so Machine learning has already been growing rapidly. It has been adopted in many different fields and of studies and industries. As can be shown in the diagram on the right side. So basically, uh, as mentioned earlier as well, machine learning can be classified into supervised learning and supervised learning. In this case, there's also reinforcement learning. In most of the cases, basically, we are more interested in supervised learning because most of the recent latest works have been also working on the classification, image classification, fraud or spam detection. But also there's a lot of work being done on unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So this is a, uh, just a generic intro introduction to machine learning. What we are now focusing more on is the deep learning. Basically, yeah, most of our attack will be conducted on deep learning. Deep learning is basically a glorified neural network on how to uh, sell neural network better is bas uh, basically it's just a neural network with more layers so some examples of machine learning are uh, multi-layer perceptrons convolution neural network and so on what's differentiating between machine learning and deep learning in classical machine learning basically you have a set of training data and then you have a user uh, or like expert who perform a feature extraction to identify which are the important features, which is then fed to the classification algorithm. And then after you train it, and then you get your classic uh, uh, prediction or the label. On deep learning, basically, uh, you try to minimize the impact of this knowledge. Basically, the feature extraction or the pre-processing is minimized, and then it also incorporated to the learning algorithm by itself. So in this case, uh, deep learning is basically a neural network, but you add more uh, intermediate uh, layers or hidden layers. In this case, the hidden layer is act, can act also as a tool to automatically extract the features and process the data. The uh, deep learning has been grown uh, due to the uh, growing of the pre-processing power, namely the introduction of GPU because previously machine, uh, machine learning or deep learning is not new. It's been there since 1950s, but due to the restriction of the resources, most of people are not interested. And then with the processing power of GPU, now we can train as many hidden layer, with many as many hidden layers as possible. And also with the ease of data collection, for example, now everything about uh, the data is being uh, collected, like from Facebook, Google, you can collect a lot of data. So basically with these two comp component, growth of processing power and data collection, Deep learning is now growing and then more and more complex algorithms have been proposed. The current trend for uh, deep learning is basically you have edge computing, edge machine learning for internet of things. In this case, basically the machine learning algorithm has been trained and then it's ported to a edge devices, such as a small microcontroller, which is usually for, uh, used for internet of things. Basically, uh, the, in this case, it's 
in the, uh, some scenario where it happens is, for example, in the autonomous car driving, because if you are connected to the server or a cloud, the prediction time can take, uh, it can take some time for the prediction. And in this case, it can increase the risk, for example, accident due to the prediction or so on. So edge computing, basically, uh, the train model is being ported to a smaller devices, like a microprocessor, for example, even some microprocessor from uh, uh, from Google, for example, Google Coral USB book. Uh, this model is small enough, but it's quite powerful to perform a classification by itself. So in this case, everything is decentralized, and but still connected within each other. On the other hand, you also have a machine learning as a service, MLAAS. This is a basically cloud computing service provided by big companies like Amazon or Microsoft, where the, uh, which gives opportunity for people uh, to use their resources to train their model. So basically they can upload their train their model. And also it provides a lot of uh, advantage. For example, you don't need a lot of exp expertise to design your network or so on. You can play trial and error. In this case, it helps to mitigate like the resources issues for, for, uh, for a smaller company or smaller researcher where you, you can just train your model online and then you can get your result uh, quickly. So these are the two trends of the deep learning recently. And yeah, basically most of the attack, since we are focusing on physical attacks, these, are, these two will be uh, also the main uh, component of our target attack. As mentioned earlier as well, like different industries has been involved in the trend of deep learning. We have finance, automotive, but, uh, research and so on. By, by the year of 2024, it was estimated that the industry will grow up to 35 billion. Uh, different uh, industries usually come out the, with their own training model and then they optimize it for their own specific task. Uh, as, as such, usually it's considered as an intellectual property by different industries. So in this case, they want to protect it, uh, the train model by itself. Uh, sorry, they want to protect their own train model. Of course, this process then a potential security or privacy issue. The stolen model, basically, it can then uh, be used uh, by someone else or like it can also potentially leak information. So then, it's a, then the, each company will then try to protect their own train model. Unfortunately, there's already uh, some attacks which has been proposed. In this work, for, uh, we will be considering a model extraction attack. Basically, the idea is to steal a detail of a confidential model or IPs from a train model. Classically, the model extraction attack is done uh, as illustrated in the figures. Basically, you have a data owner or, or the IP owner, which train the model using ML surface or on specific devices. So you get you train your model, you get a, your network, and then you have adversary, which basically try to steal the model. The adversary can fit in random input and then he get the class, uh, prediction or the label from the network. Based on that, he tried to uh, approximate or like come up with a similar model to the one being uh, targeted. So in recent words, the idea uh, to steal the model is be, uh, people has been proposing using either side channel or fault injection attacks to recover the model. So in this work, we will uh, give a survey or basically uh, summary of uh, the latest state of the art of these attacks. So just to give illustration uh, about side channel attack, so side channel analysis or side channel attack, basically this attack is exploiting the vulnerability of physical implementation. This is taken from the idea of cryptography. So in, in the area of cryptography of information security, the, the, crypto implement, uh, the algorithm itself is theoretically secure However, when being ported to a physical devices or physical implementation, this device can leak some information either through the timing, PM, or power. So in this case, one of the common scenarios as shown is the, as illustrated in the figure, the device is running crypto component and then you are measuring the power. And then the attacker try to, uh, try to retrieve uh, information regard, regarding the secret from this implementation. To give a more detailed ex uh, example, so in this case, uh, on the right side, we give the illustration. So basically, you have a setup from the attacker. The attacker can send any input data to a devices which is processing crypto uh, 
implementation, in this case, let's say it's AES. During the execution, the attacker can measure the power or EM consumption with an oscilloscope, and then he gets a set of traces. And then since the attacker can control the input, uh, the attacker can then build a hypothetical leakage model, which is then uh, compared with the traces through statistical, anal uh, statistical analysis. In this case, let's say, for example, a correlation. And then based on that, the attacker can distinguish the correct key from the incorrect key. Basically, the, uh, uh, I think it's also mentioned in the previous talk, it can be conducted in either profiling or non-profiling scenario. For the non-profiling scenario, basically it can be classified into simple power analysis. Basically, it's a visual inspection. You, you can see a pattern that clearly from the traces through naked eyes, and you have a correlation power analysis or CPA. Basically, the attacker can perform statistical analysis such as correlation, mutual information, maximum likelihood to recover the secret target. So the idea is then to use this information, the side channel from crypto to side channel on deep learning. The idea is basically both attacks will be targeting the same building blocks or operation of the algorithm. On the right hand side, we just give an example. For example, on the crypto AES, you have a plain text, you have a secret key, and then during the uh, algorithm, there will be a key addition between the plain text and key, followed by the S box. In this case, by measuring the power or EM during uh, after the S-Box operation, the attacker can recover some partial information regarding the secret. It's the same concept as in deep learning or neural network. You have an input, you have a secret weight parameter, and then usually the first operation uh, after like, pre-processing or stuff in neural network, you will have a weight multiplication. And then the attacker can then target the attack, uh, target the power or EM during the execution of the weight multiplication or, and then you, uh, it can recover some information about the secret weight. So in this case, they both, uh, they, they are both similar in a sense of the, their, uh, of the operation. And then basically uh, we can port this knowledge from crypto to the, uh, the attack on neural network. In this case, basically, yeah, another target operation is the load store operation. So we can tap, uh, we can tap that during a lookup table or like storing of the intermediate value to the memory. Also, we can attack the timing pattern during the conditional branching. So, for such an attack on uh, deep learning, basically the idea is that the, the train model is being deployed on the physical devices. In in this case, since it's on the physical devices, it allows such channel attacks, and then it of course allows different adversary to directly read or from the uh, from the device itself during the internal execution. For the attack, basically uh, the current state of the art, there are three uh, such channel leakage which is being considered. The first one is the timing, yeah, exploiting the timing difference during the execution power or electromagnetic emanation or EM, basically exploit the leakage when the internal value is being processed. And lastly is the macro architectural, basically it's exploiting the cache pattern, either it's a cache hit or cache miss, basically it's a timing uh, from loading from the cache. So the first one is side channel on um, using the timing attack, basically it's the, one of the simplest. It's basically observing the timing pattern when reading or writing from the mem uh, memory or during the execution. Basically, by doing this, uh, the attacker can infer the network structure, such as, for example, the number of layers. Basically, this uh, the idea is to observe different number of layers. Uh, for example, neural network with one hidden layer will, will be executed faster than neural network with two hidden layers and so on. You can also uh, infer the num uh, the attacker can infer the number of uh, hidden nodes in the hidden layer, because, like for example, uh, hi uh, hidden layer with one node will also be executed faster. Uh, the, the execution will be faster than hidden layer with two two nodes and so on. So by observe by uh, doing a profiling or by templating the num the timing behavior, uh, the architecture of the model can be inferred. Also. The activation function can be inferred by observing the timing pattern. For example, uh, timing pattern for ReLU operation, the simplest one, will behave differently from uh, activation function, let's say from TAN, TAN H or from SoftMax. 
because for ReLU it's just max zero or x. In this case, it's just it can be implemented as a conditional branching. So you either have a constant for zero and constant for x, but for tan h, which involves like uh, exponentiation or division, it will take slightly different and for different input, it can also like have different timing pattern. Also, in case of sometimes for during the implementation, there's some optimization involved. For example, pruning of the zero value, like it's keeping the operation if the value is zero. By observing the timing, you can also infer, uh, distinguish whether the parameter involved or the value involved is zero or not. So in this case, the timing also leaks up some, some of the value of the parameter. Next is we consider the work on uh, such channel using power or EM. Basically, the first one is the SPA again. We are dealing with uh, the construction of the parameter, uh, the architecture. For example, you can use the EM or power information to recover the, the number of layers. In this case, on the left hand side, when you measure the power during the execution, you can see clearly that there are six different distinct patterns, which indicate there are six different uh, layers on the neuron. So, this is a uh, tested on a custom MLP uh, with six layers. In this case, we can clearly distinguish the six layers just by observing the power of EM. This experiment is conducted on a microprocessor ARM Cortex M3, which also have a higher, uh, quite high SNR. So this pattern can be distinct, uh, clearly distinct, uh, distinct. Uh, for other implementations, some pre-processing technique like averaging might also be involved. And if we zoom in at one of the layer, we can identify the operation itself. For example, on the right hand side, uh, when we zoom in in one of the peaks, we can clearly see that the multiplications involved, then followed by the activation functions. Basically, for one node in the hidden layer, we can see like how many multiplications involved from the input. And then, of course, after multiplication and summation, we can uh, see the operation, uh, the activation function involved. This activation function is uh, the tan edge operation, so we can uh, see see like it's a bit longer than the typical multiplication operation. So by, by observing just the power or EM, we can clearly uh, do SPA and we can already get information regarding the architecture of the model. To deal more with the parameters, like for example, recovery of the weights, uh, CPA method from side channel can be used. In this case, uh, the statistical analysis is conducted from the leakage. So for example, you measure one, uh, one leakages and uh, sorry, you focus on one of the weight. You perform similarly as this illustrated before. You target the multiplication operation. The multiplication operation will then involve a secret constant. In this case, the secret weight and the user known value. In this case, the user input. And then you can perform. Uh, you can build a hypothetical leakage for all possible weights. And then you perform CPA to recover the secret weight. So the idea is illustrated in this slide. So the user can fit in like random input. Then it will be multiplied with a secret value, a constant in this case, the weight. Then you, the attacker can measure the EM or the power and collect the traces. And then the perform CPA. On the right side, this is the recovery of a single weight. In this case, you can see that after uh, around uh, 10,000 traces, the, the correct weights can be distinguished from the, inco the incorrect weights. So this attack can also be used in conjunction with the SPA to perform a full network recovery. The idea is then, yeah, we collect the side channel measurement, timing, power, EM. Then we perform a CPA on each of the weight. Uh, the traces can be reused because single traces can contain multiple multiplication as shown before. So we can recover each weight individually by, the, by doing the correlation and then also identifying the activation function with the timing profile. And afterwards, after you perform it for every neuron in the network, uh, basically you can kind of recover the whole network, uh, imitate the whole network. In this case, uh, in our attack shown in USENIX, we basically we perform the attack on both MLP and uh, CNN. So MLP is trained on MNIST model. Uh, is both models are trained uh, without using without optimization. So we just want to compare the accuracy. So for the MLP model trained with MNIST, we achieve like 98 point, 98 point, uh, 17, uh, 16 percent accuracy, 
whereas our recovery model is 98.15 percent. For uh, CNN, which tra is trained on Cypher 10 data set, it's accurate, it has accuracy of 78.47 percent, and our recovered model can uh, achieve accuracy of 78.11 percent. And also, if we compare the difference, absolute difference between the recovered weight is within accuracy of 0 0.001. So in this case, we've shown the uh, successful, almost successful, I think, uh, the, the whole uh, network recovery. So lastly, we move to another type of attack uh, with microarchitectural. So the, all the previous attacks shown is usually conducted on the edge devices uh, on microprocessor. In this case, we consider the attack on the CPU or GPU. So what does the microarchitectural attack do? It basically exploit the cache timing pattern uh, to reconstruct the network. So for example, uh, in this case, the assumption is that the attacker can access the same uh, the same div, uh, machine as the victim, and you can uh, it can observe the cache pattern. So in this case, for example, if the victim have a trained model, this is from the paper uh, security analysis of deep neural network on the presence of cache side channel attack, a uh, deep recon attack. So the victim have a DNN model on the, div, on the uh, server. The attacker can access the same machine. Then by observing the cache hit or cache map uh, missed, basically he can con uh, reconstruct all the parameters such as number of layers, number of convolution layers, and so on. And then he can reconstruct the network. And uh, basically then he does uh, some other attacks, for example, uh, RNN to recover the parameters. We will not go into detail for this. Lastly, the most important part is we have all these attacks on deep learning. The next uh, important, uh, the, uh, the idea is that should we have consider a countermeasure for all these attacks? Yeah, we, uh, most of the, uh, the simplest idea is uh, to adopt the countermeasure from such channel attacks. So in, in this case, basically mostly a uh, hiding or masking for timing is basically constant time or randomized execution. So far, there's only one work uh, which is focusing more on the countermeasure. It's called MaxNet. It's proposed uh, recently presented, uh, accepted for host 2020. So the idea is to uh, specifically uh, build a masking countermeasure wrapped to wrap the neural network. In this case, basically, it has a latency overhead of 2.8 and area overhead of 2.3. However, it's the, uh, the one challenge is still raising up because so far most of the network, uh, most of the countermeasure are just simple countermeasure built in using such a uh, normal such channel countermeasure. And still the performance and area overhead trade-off is still uh, an issue. So coming up with a optimal implementation for the countermeasure is still a challenge. So for, for this part, basically the conclusion is that we already presented the security vulnerability of deep learning implementation, which is susceptible to model extraction attack. We showed the application of uh, side channel attack to conduct to, for this attack, exploiting three different side channel, timing, EM of power, and macro architectural. And then of course, with, with this kind of attack, there's a need or like there's a grow, uh, it's important to come up with a countermeasure optimized specifically for neural network implementation since the implementation uh, are different from the typ your typical um, such, uh, cryptography implementation and then it can be growing exponentially as well due to the size of network. So come up with a good strategy is also a, a promising future work. So before we can uh, before we continue with the fault attack, are there any questions so far? So there are uh, three questions which, are, uh, which I can see. So the first one is, uh, do you assume that you know the DNN topology? Or, uh, uh, and if you don't know how practical is the weight discovery? Uh, for the weight disco uh, discovery, basically, uh, this is assuming that, yeah, it's a simple uh, MLP or CNN. The idea is, uh, uh, I mean, I think we, we discuss it in the paper basically if we don't know the topology or at least we know uh, let's say for, for example the kernel size or like how many nodes in the hidden layer we have to build two hypotheses uh, kind of hypothesis like we do cpa and then we try to uh, get the output and then we correlate the output 
uh, we're considering two scenarios, whether it's on the next layer or outside the kernel and then within the kernel. So we then compare the correlation and then we build a hypothesis based on that. Uh, more details are on the paper. And uh, the second question is that uh, for uh, the weight hypothesis value the, in the experiments, how many different values were you uh, dealing with? Uh, sorry? Uh, for, for the weight recovery attack, how many hypotheses were you, uh, were you dealing with? Uh, uh, the, the weight hypothesis. Uh, so th this, is de this depends on the implementation. For example, if it's a floating point implementation, uh, the, the value is stored in floating point or fixed point. In this case, it depends on the size. If it's floating 32-bit floating point or if it's a fixed point. So basically, uh, we, the hypothesis is all the number of the bits available. For example, 32-bit uh, floating point, you consider 2 to the power 32. But in that case, if you, can, if you are willing to sacrifice some precision, then yeah, you can cut some of the less important bits. Thank you. Uh, there are further questions, but uh, in the interest of time, I would uh, I recommend that we proceed with the uh, talk and then we can come back if, if time remains. Up. Okay, so I'll pass it to my colleague. Dr. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, Shivam, for the introduction. I will continue the presentation on Phototech on neural networks. Phototech was already discussed in that Deep's talk. So it, it is a popular physical attack method used against cryptographic circuits. By changing intermediate values during the cryptographic algorithm execution, Phototech can efficiently provide information on secret values, helping to recover the secret key in just a few encryptions. There are various uh, methods for Phototech. For example, um, Voltage glitch, laser, EM, or sorry, I I can't see I I can't see the screen here. How do I see the screen here? I can't see the screen here. Can't see the screen. I can't here. see this part of the screen. Are you don't want to see the other screen? No, I want to see the slide. I can't see the slide. Uh, I can't see. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, so we are interested in looking at the application of fault attack to neural networks. In the domain of neural networks, adversary learning is very well developed, where the adversary um, construct uh, special inputs capable of confusing the machine learning models, often leading to output misclassification. With the fault attack, we can also change the intermediate values. So fault attack uh, provides an alternate method to arrive at the same result as adversarial learning. Uh, furthermore, with altered intermediate values, the model output will also change. So this potentially uh, will reveal information about the model parameters. So I will be talking about two attacks. The first one is to achieve misclassification, and the second one is to achieve reverse engineering. For misclassification, the main idea is to have fault injection during the usage of neural network-based classifier. And our attack target is the computation of activation functions of the neural networks. For the result, we have experimentally verified the attack using laser fault injection. And we have uh, simulated the analysis of full network vulnerability with a genetic algorithm. Here, the genetic algorithm is used to optimize the choice of faulted neurons in the neural network. So this picture shows the setup of the experiment in our lab. We have a pulse laser and uh, the device under test is 80 mega 328p microcontroller mounted on Arduino Uno development board. Uh, what we achieved uh, here is uh, instruction skips. And in this uh, figure, we show the attack result. So um, picture A is uh, sigmoid, B is uh, tan H, C is RILU. And the blue line uh, corresponds to original uh, activation function output, and the red line is the faulted uh, 
uh, function output. And for each, this, uh, for each of these functions, we have only one instruction skip. For sigmoid and tan h, we can basically flip the output, uh, the sign of the output. And for ReLU, we can fix the output to be always zero. And then we uh, analyze the, the vulnerability of uh, entire neural network using a uh, simulation. The network structure is shown in this table. Uh, here, the target function is the activation function under attack. And uh, the network was trained using Keras on MNIST data set. Genetic algorithm was used to optimize the search of neurons to fault. This figure shows the uh, simulated misclassification rate. Uh, as expected, genetic algorithm gives better attack result compared to random selection of neurons. And the figure also shows that uh, with our fault models, sigmoid is uh, more vulnerable than ReLU and TANH. With just 10% of 40 neurons, we can achieve uh, around 70% of misclassification rate for sigmoid. Uh, so next, I will go to reverse engineering. Uh, as Demento mentioned, we assume adversary aims and IP set for overproduction and illegal cloning of machine learning proprietary models, normally running on edge or IoT devices. We assume the machine learning models are carefully derived through transfer learning from popular and open machine learning models. So the first few layers of the machine learning model are publicly and known to the adversary. And the goal of the adversary is to recover the uh, later layers uh, parameters. In more detail, we consider a deep layer feature extractor transfer learning. Uh, the figure shows uh, uh, the detail, which means uh, uh, the student takes the first few layers from the teacher and delete the last fully connect connected layer and uh, train its own fully connected layer on its own data. So the first few layers are all public known and the goal of the attacker is basically recover the weight and the bias of the last uh, fully connected layer. As Demento just showed now with the uh, uh, EM measurement, you can identify the layers and also the uh, multipli multiplications of the neural network. So we can assume that the attacker can find the timing to inject the fault. And uh, this figure shows the details. Um, we assume the first few layers are known. So uh, the attacker with the known input, the attacker knows the value capital I in this figure. And uh, uh, her goal is to recover the weight W and the bias B. So uh, the attack model we have is a bit flip on the sum bit of the intermediate values, which we call SNF, that stands for sum bit flip fault. So the attacker uh, focus on taking two intermediate val values. First is to change the sign of the product of capital I and the W. And the second is to change uh, the sign of the bias. And we can show it theoretically. The attacker can recover the bias vector with M faults. Here M is the number of neurons in the output layer. And the attacker can recover the weight matrix with M times N faults. And N is the uh, number of neurons in the last hidden layer. Basically, uh, to recover the bias, the attacker first uh, run the neural network with an input, and uh, then she injects fault in the bias she wants to recover to uh, flip the sign of the bias, and then she gets a faulted output. By doing computation on the correct output and faulty output, uh, she can recover the attacked bias. We did uh, uh, some experiments on some well-known uh, networks. Those uh, networks uh, were taken and uh, the last layer were removed and substituted with a single fully connected layer and then returned with CIFA-10. Uh, here we have uh, quite good precision, but actually 
we would like to know that the, the, the error here is uh, the precision error of the Python library used. So I, actually we can fully recover the weight and bias is a, a library precision is better. Okay, in, in conclusion, in this part of the talk, we have seen a uh, photo tag on neural network to achieve misclassification and reverse engineering. For misclassification, we have uh, seen uh, experimental, we have experimentally verified the attack. Also, uh, we saw some analysis of whole neural network with a genetic algorithm. Here, genetic algorithm is to uh, select uh, neurons for attack. And we also saw for the attack to achieve reverse engineering in the context of uh, transfer learning. And uh, we have uh, developed a method to fully recover the weights and bias. Okay, is there any questions? Thanks, Shabu. Uh, uh, for the talk, uh, so uh, please feel, to, feel free to ask some questions. Uh, I have one question, uh, which is I think related to micro architectural attacks. So the question is: Is meltdown and specter attack can be conducted using MLDL? Um, meltdown and the uh, uh, specter can be conducted what? Uh, using machine learning or deep learning, uh, like can, can we do such kind of attacks using machine learning? Huh. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe if we have very good uh, tra training data design, it might be possible. I I'm not I'm sure. And there is one more question about, I think it is uh, pertaining to, to Dermato's uh, presentation. Uh, so how do we access a physical measurement in a cloud environment? How do we access a physical measurement in a cloud environment? Okay, uh, in the paper, I assume that uh, yeah, you, uh, there are some things that they can access the device, uh, basically, also have uh, been accessed by the victim. Yeah. So that's uh, by default yeah, assumption. So I think, yeah, somehow uh, with some payloads or something, the attacker can connect to the stats and do the CP discovery and then attack the attack. I think, yeah, probably uh, more realistic so they don't have to be Thanks, Mato. So, uh, thanks, Adam, uh, for this talk. Uh, 